every time I listen to Over the Rainbow or think of Judy Garland, how beautiful and simple and wonderful and pure she was at MGM as a child. Walt Disney came up with wonderful children from the, the Mickey Mouse Club. Weren't they great? I'm sitting here looking at this lovely lady. Her name is Cheryl. Hello, Cheryl. Hi. Little Cheryl. Hi, Skippy. You were, sh but you are Cheryl Holdridge. Yes. That is your real name, Holdridge? Yes. Cheryl Holdridge grew up in San Francisco or no, grew up? No, Los Angeles. Really? Yeah, I grew up in Los Angeles, father? San Fernando Valley. Your father and mother were actually vaudevillians. Daddy was a retired general. He Mommy was a vaudevillian and worked as a comedy dancer with the Ziegfeld Follies. A comedy dancer? Yeah, comedy routine. Like she wasn't a leggy girl. A uh, knockabout type of thing, was yeah. it? Comedy knockabout? Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. Uh -huh. She and her partner. So you really grew up in the business. As a child, four years old, studying ballet and mm -hmm. all that. Tell yes. me about that, Cheryl. Well, it was actually when I was just a little older than that. It was with the Bluebird Troops, you know, Campfire Girls and Bluebirds. Uh -huh. and, all, and that's what we did after school. We went and took dancing lessons. And it was fun. It wasn't work. Uh -huh. Where was this at now? In San Fernando in, Valley, in, Burbank. In Burbank, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. And that was really the stepping stone for everything that I did professionally in my life. And how did they discover Cheryl? Well, Becoming Cheryl on uh, the, the Mickey Mouse Club. Well, I had, I had been working with the New York City Ballet when they were in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. doing the Nutcracker Suite. During that time, the first year of the Mickey Mouse Club, they had the audition. It came on. I was sitting with my girlfriends watching it the first year going, oh, we want to be Mouseketeers, as I think so many people my age wanted to be. I'd been sent out for an interview. I called the casting director because my agent did not want me to go because they didn't pay enough money at Disney. Disney didn't. No, and I was a new face, and I was doing lots of commercials. Uh -huh. So I called the casting director I met and said, can I come out and try out for the Mickey Mouse Club? <laughs> and he said, okay, come, and I did. Uh -huh. Blew my song, blew my dance. Can I start over again? Uh -huh. They brought me back, much to our surprise, and I blew it again. But being a daughter of a general and a southern lady, I was taught to say yes, sir, no, sir, to shake hands. And on these auditions was a semicircle. Mr. Disney was there, the director, the producer, the choreographer. And after I recouped and remembered myself, I went around and shook hands with uh -huh. them all. And that was a contract, too, wasn't it? it he didn't have a, con a written contract. No, the, not until after the show had been done, actually, but the right. contracts came right. up, you know, for the year previous to right. that. But they called me back. They, they, we had to deal with people, and they liked that I said yes, sir, no, sir, I think, and they liked my God-given smile. You have a God-given smile, I, I must tell you. Look so. at this. Cheryl, how old were you there? I was just 12. 12 years old? Yeah, just 12 oh, when that was you, taken. You remember that, that? I remember that picture being taken, actually. You do? I had went through your mind when you were taking this picture. Thank this God they were taking another picture because the one they had done before was not very good. Uh -huh. But I had just been over visiting a boy who'd been burned terribly out at a terrible tragedy in the San Fernando Valley. He was at St. Joe's. And they'd asked if some of the Mouseketeers went over. My mother volunteered me. Uh -huh. And I went over to see this boy who'd had third degree burns all over Aww. his body. And I was just so grateful I could bring a smile to him. And I came back, and the associate producer said, We're doing another picture. Let's show it again. I want to see that. Look I remember it. that. Oh, uh, look how sweet. Tell yeah. me, that, yeah. the Mickey Mouse c kids, mm -hmm. they all did great things. We we'll all have kept true to the club, I believe, you know, and to the principles. When you say true to the club, what do you mean by that? You know, Jimmy Dodd was our mentor. He was our spiritual person on that show. He was, did all those little ditties about do unto others and be good to the underdog and keep trying even though you're not the prettiest or the best. If you do your best, you're going to be okay. Uh -huh. And I think that most of us kept that with us through our life. You know, mm -hmm. and I know it's been a mainstay for me in my life. Well, look at this. Yeah. Look at the group. <laughs> How many were there? Look. All in told, this. in the three years, there were 39 of us. 39. And there, were, and there were about 12 of us who did roll call. And that's when we come out in the beginning of the show and go, Cheryl, Annette, yeah. Bobby, I want to show Tommy. this clip. I want to oh. show this clip so the audience can remember, go back, just a clip. Okay, okay? Sure. Real quick. Let's see this clip. Okay.
the partner's count off now. Great. What does go through your mind when you see that clip? Was I ever that young? <laughs> no, just all the joy Fun. of it. Absolute joy the of it. Joy. So many kids worked during their young years, but they were individuals on shows and they were alone on shows. Right. Being with the Mickey Mouse Club was just another form of being with your peers and being in school, you know, which was great. Do you know? I mean, it was a bunch of kids having a good time together. Walt Disney, tell me about Walt. Don't know much about him. All you people, I've interviewed many of you don't know much about He really loved his cartoon characters. That was where his true love was. He, I think that we did the Mickey Mouse Club more to help finance Disneyland Disney than Mouse. anything else. Uh -huh. And he would come around the set occasionally and check on us and all. But he was a very quiet man and he was very much involved with his animation. How did you people feel about that? All you Disney kids didn't care. We had each other. I mean, you That's know, I mean, he was Mr. Disney. Yes, uh-huh. And he was like, you know, kids, he was an adult, and okay. You just had a reunion. Let's yeah, that was a few that. years ago. Oh, yeah. but it's a good reunion. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Where was this at? That was at Disneyland, actually, that one. That picture was taken at uh -huh. Disneyland, though we had done the shows down at Disney World. Yeah. Tell me about Nanette and you and... I mean, Cheryl and Nanette are very popular on that show. Yeah. Musketeers, tell me, or and Mus and Mickey I Mouse Clubs. I think that we all, Annette was our most popular. Was she yes, really? Yes, she was. She was Why Mr. Disney's that? favorite. And was, she was, oh, yes, he oh. was, he went to see her do a recital. And he, when he was first starting the idea of the show, and he looked up and says, that's what I want on the show. Really? And he hired her. Uh -huh. And we all came after that. And I think, though, that different people were attracted to different people, whether it was some people with the same name, some people with coloring. I mean, some people, I was their favorite. Uh -huh. You know, you're on the show every day, five days a week. Kids come home from school and watch you. They're going to get to know you. You're still on. Yeah, You're still are. on five at days a week. 1230 at night. <laughs> every day. Yeah. All over the world. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Blessed. When you... Blessed just grateful that I that I was a part of that you know I mean it's um, it's the it's the best legacy it's so you, much fun. when you're going out there I saw you at signing your pictures the other day yeah. you never usually do that no I haven't but before. boy they came up to you people all you all you were there who were there you with see you? Doreen was with us Tommy Bobby and Johnny Crawford who was a Mouseketeer the first year right yeah. and I just love yeah, this picture that a cute? is this tell me about this picture that's taken from the rifleman I did a guest star appearance on the rifleman and I gave Johnny his first TV kiss that, did you really yeah it was, How a, was Johnny there 13 12 oh younger than me <laughs> 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 and I was the older woman and I still and I was under because my mom was with me. And I was probably 16, he was probably 13 Let's get or 14. back with mothers and fathers yeah. on the children of the Musketeers uh -huh. and, and Mickey Mouse Clubs. Uh -huh. Tell me about it. Were they always there on the set? We had to have one adult for two children. Really? Yep. And sometimes my mom would pick, Annette had two brothers uh -huh. younger than she, and sometimes my mom would pick up Annette on the way to the studio and would act as her guardian. We They did that at times, right, you know. Right. But there had to be one adult guardian per two children there. Really? Yeah. And it was a good thing. You know? And they had the theater set up where they, the parents hung out and then they could go and see what they were editing and all of that. It was a very family-oriented studio mm -hmm. at that time. It was a small studio. Tell me about Nanette right now. How Annette. Is she, Annette. How is she doing? She's not well. Yes, She's and she is afflicted with one of I think God's most awful diseases, and Terrible. that's multiple sclerosis. Yes, because it leaves the mind clear, and your body betrays you. The yeah. mind is clear. Yeah, that's and you know that. You see her often? No, I don't see her often. I keep in touch with her family, her friends, and 
that picture that you're getting picture right yeah. there a few years ago, this one. And that's with Stella Stevens and Carol Connors and Catherine Bauman, who made all those wonderful right. purses, and Annie and me. And that was a woman in show business for children function. And right. it was one of the last times Annette really made a public appearance. It was a fabulous event. This was event. a few years ago at the Wilshire, the Beverly Wilshire, Wilshire Hotel. Was, I was there that evening. It was the day after Valentine. It was a great event. <sighs> Fabian was there. Yes, and I he remember. normally doesn't Fabian. generally work on those things. And Frankie uh -huh. was there. And Frankie Avalon. Yeah, yeah, it was a wonderful I night. I remember yeah. that. It was absolutely great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I see tears in your eyes when yeah. you talk about these wonderful people that you've worked with. Yeah. That, but you're Blessed. very close. Yeah. But you're still close. I think when children go through puberty together, you yes. know, and you 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 live with one another. We we you know we've been godparents. We've been to each other's weddings, to their parents' funerals. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, it's wherever we may be. You know, the how many years were you on the show? I was show? on it for two seasons. Two seasons, but it's yeah, we came in a half year. Oh, well, they we, they had it first run for the from 55 to 59. I came on in 56. Uh -huh. And then they re-ran it and re-ran it through the 60s, right. again in the 70s, then on cable in the 80s, and again on the 90s, but and now at night. Cheryl's name is Cheryl on yeah, that show. it is. Annette, Annette. Yes. And Daryl is a uh, Daryl. Well, most of these kids, Bobby, that's his real Bobby. name, and Sherry, and Sharon, and Lonnie, and Tommy, and Bobby Doreen. Uh-huh. They all are, ah. Uh, ah, uh, this is the picture. Look at that. I love it. Can we? That's, that's Nanette, Doreen. Doreen, and you. Yes. At that affair. No, actually, was a this one? was a surprise birthday oh, party right. that I outfit. gave for Annette up at my Thank house you. in Beverly Hills. She oh. thought it was my mother's birthday because they're very close, and it was just for the Musketeers uh -huh. and parents, and it was um, just her family, and she thought it was for my mom, and she walked in, and it was just this wonderful surprise party. It was the same year as we did this reunion. Uh -huh. You did a lot of guest appearances on television I did. when you grew up. I did. Leave it to Beaver, too. Lots of those. Tell me about Leave it to Beaver. Loved it. Tortured Tony Dow. <laughs> Tortured. <laughs> I was always the girl next door that, you know, he, uh -huh. there was one show where he, he had a, a pug nose and he wore this thing to make his nose smaller. Uh -huh. I fell in love with another boy and had a mustache. He wore a good mustache. He put a false one on. Right. And we had a wonderful time. I loved working on that show with Jerry and Tony. It was great. And Barbara Billings, you of course, is just wonderful. Work with some wholesome people, wholesome yeah. shows. Well, those were Donna that Reed. Was the era. That's, what do you think about television right now? Isn't this awful? Don't watch much. You don't. No. But you'll be ashamed of yourself. You'd be frightened of. Frightened. Well, I mean, I see it because I like to see what's going on, and I, you know, I've always thought that mystery in life was better than just having it right out there. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, but you know, times have changed. The the immediacy of the internet, the immediacy of television. When you look back when I was doing television, right. it was even before the Vietnam War. And then the Vietnam War the came, innocence. and we were getting it like three days delayed. Yeah. And it wasn't that immediacy. Today, I mean, when we had the Gulf War, I mean, we were watching it like we were watching a television show. Right. That affects us. And on some primal level, it affects us in how we deal with, you know, I don't understand it, but then again, you know, I don't produce, so... Through the years, <laughs> through the years, the Musketeers, reunions, and all that, yeah. uh, you've all been good, good. Any books about it? Any, any, I think Lorraine right? Santoli has written a book about the Musketeers. There have been. I, many of us have written a book. Right. Annette did. Annette wrote Annette a book, basically, on, her. on, on herself yes. and her experience in life. But how come Cheryl hasn't? I'm still living it. Ah. You know, I'm still doing my life. You are. Yeah, I'm still wonderful. having a wonderful life, and I, you know, I took care of my late husband until he passed away last year. And my you were mom. Married, you were married to Manning Post. Manning Post. Yeah, he was my last husband. That's my your first last. husband was Lance Reventlow. Lance was a. Oh, wasn't he a uh, honey? That was Miss Hutton's son. Yes, Barbara Hutton's Barbara son. Barbara Hutton's son. Let's get this real close. Can you Can see I? him there? Can we? That is Lance. Yeah. Who, oh. We lost him in the airplane crash. In 1972 at, in Aspen, Colorado. What a handsome guy. In the summertime. Oh, what a handsome guy. I want you to have that picture oh, right yeah. over there. Oh, my sweetie. Yeah. And this was your husband. Yeah, just lost. that's my Manning. This is Manning right here. Yeah. Uh, I just lost him last March. I just saw him at a party with you at yeah. a wonderful function. Here's, here's, I love this part. This is, look at yeah, this. Can we get this? With John Ferrara 
Look and at that. Rob Hertzberg, Speaker of the Assembly, Manning and me, and Joel Wax. Oh, yeah, Joel we, Wax. Manning and I had been honored as Sweethearts of the Year um, by the auxiliary for the Haven House, the woman's shelter out in Pasadena. Uh -huh. And um, You do a lot of the uh, helps. Yeah. Tell me about that. Got to give back. Cheryl, you sit in there. Such a joy talking to you because you're saying those wonderful things. Um, you're giving back to things that you. Yeah, I've been so blessed. You know, not that I haven't had tragedy and heartache and some very difficult times in my life, and had 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 personal um, roadblocks that I've had to overcome. And yet, I think some of us, Skip. I think you're this way. I think some of us are born joy-based. And I think some of us aren't. And I was born joy-based that no matter what, my glass is half full. I'm grateful I woke up today. Do you know, it's never half empty. It's always half full. My, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to wake up today. You never know what's going to happen. That's right. You never know. Regrets any? Oh, sure. Looking back, yeah. where would you like to... But I'm what? not sure that I would change anything because I wouldn't be who I am today. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have learned the lessons. I wouldn't have had to overcome the things and learn the things about myself. Uh -huh. If life is always easy, I don't think that we learn about ourselves or, and what our strengths are as well as our weaknesses. You know? What's the nicest thing someone could say about the Mickey Mouse kids? The nicest thing about the Mickey Mouse kids? That we represented honor and we re represented respect, you know, which I think there's a great lack of respect in today's world. We respected each other. We respected what the show stood for. To this day, do you know, we respect the image of the Mickey Mouse Club. Right. You know, and it was a great one. Jimmy Dodd was the most spiritual person I've ever known. Darling man. Who's this right here? Oh, that's Peter Marshall. May I see this? This is from the Hollywood Square on so the left, Peter. and that's Jerry Mathers. Uh -huh. Leave it to Beaver on I the know. right. That's Leave it to Beaver, yeah, right? And this, I love. That